There's a great article on truthdig.com about universal basic income and how it could be funded without upping taxes or uh, creating a problem. So the article basically goes into, um, it, it stems out of, the, in, in May of 27, um, a team of researchers at University of Oxford published the results of a survey of the world's best artificial intelligence experts who predicted that there was a 50% chance of AI outperforming humans in all tasks within 45 years. All human jobs are expected to be automated in 120 years. An Asian respondent said it would even take uh, less time. So what that means is then what are people going to do? How are they gonna work? Or how are they gonna get earn money? So they come up with universal basic income. Because robots, AIs, aren't gonna, they're not gonna be consumers. So who's gonna buy that stuff? They've done studies that, um, a new economic study found that UBI of $1,000 of $1, a month to all adults would add $2.5 trillion to the US economy in eight years. If you're not working, and they've done, they've, they've talked about a lot of studies here. There, there's, a, there's a proposed in Switzerland, their trials are beginning in Finland. There's a pilot program going on in Brazil right now. The cities of Ontario, uh, in Canada, Oakland in California, and Utrecht in the Netherlands are planning trials. So Jeremy Corbyn has talked about this. And a lot of people say, oh, welfare incurs laziness. Well, in 1968, President Richard Nixon initiated a successful trial showing that the money had little impact on the recipient's working hours. And what it, the study goes into is people then had more time to do other stuff. Younger people went, stayed in school, Imagine just like at my age, if you just said, here's money, I would do more creative stuff. I'd do more of these. I might go back to college. You know, I've always wanted to get a marine biology degree. I don't know, maybe I couldn't do that, but like I, you know, people would take more classes. They'd have more time and money to spend into the economy. Right now, most people in America, as I've said numerous times, can't afford a $500 emergency. That means no one's buying any extras. You know, I, I haven't. I, I study martial arts, but I I haven't the last couple years because I really haven't had the extra money to do so. Do you see? Like, I don't have. I haven't bought a new pair of shoes in two years. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I've gotten some stuff from sponsors from podcasts and stuff like that. But you see, like, what extra money can do, an extra time. You know, and this idea, oh, some they're all going to sit around and no one's going to work. No, people might go, oh my god, I have more time to play with my kids. I don't have to work three jobs and barely see my children or barely see my significant other because I gotta work, 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 work. You know? So here's what the other stuff came up with. Uh, and a Canadian trial found that employment rates among young adults did not change. High school competition rates increased and hospitalization rates dropped by 8.5% because people are stressed out. They're not running around eating shitty food, not getting enough sleep and pumping themselves for the caffeine because they got to go to some job they hate to pay their bills. Um, studies have shown it would actually be cheaper to distribute funds to the entire population than to run the welfare services governments engage in now. It has been calculated that if the UK's welfare budget were split among the country's 50 million adults, each of them would get uh, 5,160 pounds a year. But that's not enough to cover basic survival needs in a modern economy. Taxes would need to be raised, additional debt incurred, or other programs slashed. And these are solutions on which governments are generally unwilling to embark. The other option is quantitative easing, a form of central bank quantitative easing in which the money flows directly into the real economy rather than simply into banks. In Europe, politicians are taking another look at this once derided helicopter money. A UBI is being proposed as monetary policy that would stimulate productivity without increasing taxes. It's, that's amazing. And there's a whole explanation here by a Nobel uh, Prize winning economist. Um, it's a very extensive article. It's something I would suggest you read um, because, and then there's links to other articles because I'm not an economist and I don't want to, I don't want to dumb it up. <laughs> or dumb it down, but I'll leave you with this last paragraph in the article. In a stagnant economy, a UBI can create a demand needed to clear the shelves for unsold products and drive new productivity. See? 
everyone's getting that money no matter what. If the economy's up, if the economy's down, it would probably even out. We probably wouldn't. Have, I mean, most of these like uh, recessions and depressions and stuff like that are usually created by greed of, of uh, you know, out of control capitalism. Um, and it's not what they're saying is. Uh, as robots take over, if we don't have UBI, then the rest, half the population is going to starve. And so UBI wouldn't be welfare. It would simply be a dividend for living in the 21st century. It's a great article. It's a great topic. I like talking about it. And I want to hear what you guys think in the comments.